Here we are with John Baisley of Baroness. Just wrapped up a show at the TLA with uh, Mashuga and Decapitated. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes and blow the scene readers from around the world. Really appreciate yeah, it, man. My pleasure, man. Awesome, man. So uh, we're rounding. I guess it's about the last week of uh, of the tour. How how has it been thus far? Like, how's it been treating you guys? It's been so awesome. It's been so super mellow. Uh, I, I can't like we I've honestly like never been on a tour that's this mellow. You know, everybody, everybody in the band, and all the bands, and the whole crew just kind of gets it in that way, where nobody's, nobody's like, there's no drama, there's nobody like stepping on anybody else's toes or anything. It's, it's been really fun, and you know, I love both of these bands, so it's kind of cool, you know, to get get a chance to tour with them and see them, know them, and all that. It's awesome. Awesome, man. Awesome. Very cool. So. You guys are gearing up to release your new album, uh, Yellow and Green, on Relapse Records on uh, July 17th. When did the recording and like writing process start for the record? We started on basically on January 1st, 2011, which is about two weeks after we'd gotten off our last tour. We just dove straight into it. You know, spent the, spent the whole year writing, rehearsing, practicing. You know, recording demos by ourselves. And, you know, in our studio. And, uh, and, you know, then ultimately recording it, making the artwork for it, putting the package together, and then you know, now it'll get, it'll get out there sometime soon. Awesome, awesome, man. So, um, is the writing process a collective effort between everybody, or is there kind of like one member that steers the ship? Or is there anything that's all you kind of step out of your comfort zone on this on this record, or try any new things as far as the writing process? I don't know. I mean, like the, every song's kind of got its own story. You know, sure. its own its own arc, and, and you know one thing one thing I, that we've never done is like stuck to stuck to a formula when we're writing. So you know, some songs one person writes, some songs kind of just happen when everybody's in a room. You know, it's really it's really quite mysterious to me how songs are even written to begin with. So when they happen, you just you just you know like you just don't ask. It's happening. Let it let it happen. And if it's a good song, then you know then it'll be a keeper. Right on, right on. Awesome. So Baroness is is known for building vast landscapes of sound that often defy genre, incorporating sludge, metal, even punk. Um, any unique pieces of equipment that you guys employ to capture the sound that is that is Baroness, or any odd like recording techniques that you guys use that you feel is pivotal to capture the sound? None, none, none that I think are pit, are necessarily pivotal. Okay. I think. You know, the name of the game with me has always been keep it, you know, to keep it changing and to, you know, always keep my mind open to fresh ideas. So I won't tour twice with the same gear. I've got, you know, you know, like, well, all of us, we just, we've got, you know, like, we're kind of gear collectors, especially into guitars and pedals and amps and stuff like that. So, you know, I've kind of got outfit for any mood I guess sure you know like if, if I want to be scrappy and sound bad I've got a guitar for that and if I want to keep it real slick and smooth I got something for that I mean I really it's really it's a, it's all about um, I guess building your color palette with instruments and, and sounds and you know painting a broad picture I guess I don't know that's a stupid no, no, it um, makes sense. No, I mean, the, I, we've, we've got a lot of stuff. I've been around for a while, and, you know, kind of a gear addict. I've got some stuff that's intentionally bad. I got some stuff that's intentionally great. Right on. You know, I just, you know, I'll you give me something. I will figure out some way to make music with it. Cool. You you tinkering with any new stuff on this tour at all? Yeah, every like I said, every tour is different. This tour, yeah. I've got three guitars I've never toured with. Awesome. There's, those are the three guitars I'm using, and cool. you know. We head out for our next tour. It'll it'll be brand new equipment for that. You know, it's 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 just you know like music's not supposed to be easy. Sure. In, in my mind, it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be a challenge. So if something becomes redundant, repetitive, you need to you need to attack that and say you know well, well why is it why this redundancy? Why um, you know, have I have I fallen into a pattern? And, and is that pattern? artistic one or creative one because most patterns aren't so when something becomes too repetitive I just want to change it I just want to see it move forward and turn into something else sure 
Righteous, righteous, man. So I saw a recent interview where uh, you and Pete were um, talking about the experience of seeing Fugazi and the lasting impact, like taking a single unifying headspace uh, that the band is able to capture, um, you know, your live performances, um, and, you know, depending on, you know, the diverse crowds and, and what have you. Um, have you, how has it been, you know, creating that headspace on a tour, you know, where obviously, you know, you have a mixed fan base with Meshuga fans, decapitated fans. Like, has it been a challenge to create that oh, yeah, headspace totally, on this totally, tour? Totally. Right on. How do you we deal with that yeah, challenge? We wouldn't have taken this tour if it wasn't a challenge. Right on. You know, that's kind of the point. That's kind of the point of touring with a diverse act, or a diverse lineup. Sure. Is is to put yourself on a different chopping block and see, you know, see what you're made of. You know, this this isn't this is this isn't a particularly tough tour for us in terms of the crowd because we you know we've, at this point we've got enough of a fan base that. There's always some strong supporters to keep our, you know, to keep us involved. But on the same token, there's a lot of diehard Meshuggah fans that are here just for them. They'll give two shits about us, um, and it's those people that that I focus on. Right on. It's those people who's, who I intend to sway if they're swayable, if they're if they're if their minds are open. And that's where I focus my attention, my energy, and I attack those members of the audience in such a way to, you know, to try to open their minds up a little bit to something, something new. Because if I was just playing for our fans, you know, like where's the, what's the challenge there? Right. You know, then it's then it's then you're talking about refinements. This is this is a weird, you know, this is a weird, sort of a weird billing in some ways. So what we've chosen to do is bring a set with us that really amplifies. How different a band we are than, than the other two uh, that we're playing with. Sure. And to me, that's you know, it, there's some you know inherently like there's some risk there. You know, you, it, it it could fall flat on its ass, and you know maybe it has, maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm not really in the audience, but uh, you know, no risk, no reward. Right. Right. Now, how do you guys? I mean, you guys have vast touring experience all over the world with all different types of acts. Like at the has your view changed on what you gauge as a successful tour? Like, do you is it reaching new fans? Is it you know speaking to the old ones or like a combination of those things? Like, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's it's that's a, that's a tip. Well, what's a successful tour? Well, uh, it's not a successful tour if we come back miserable. Right. So, you know, we've had to figure out what it is that keeps us creative, keeps us energized on tour, and that's one thing. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, sort of without without a doubt, we want, you know, we'd like to we'd like to think that there's some conversion happening with uh, with some of these fans. So if we come back and you know a few more people are uh, you know receptive to our sound, then that's you know that's great for us. That's that's the point. You know, that's the point. right. It's to say, you know, and, and all the bands on this on this tour, like I'm sure we've all you know we we're all we've all started from the same place, which is. You don't have to accept popular music because it's popular music. Right. You can challenge that and work within those work within the confines of the you know the the rock band or the metal band, but you can do something interesting and you can say something in your own way. And that's that's you know that's our intent. As long as we feel val you know as long as we as the tour is validated by the fact that we have gone out there and presented ourselves. To an audience in a way that we find energizing and, and you know, forward moving, then, then that, that, that's success on one level. Right on. Uh, I don't like to lose money on tour. Right. But you know, finances come and go, especially as a musician. There's really, there's really not good money in this business unless you're Lady Gaga. So. You know, we've 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 essentially exercised that little demon from the picture, and you know what we're left with is just the you know, the quality and vibrancy of our music. Right on, very cool. You guys are stepping up as really leaders in the metal world right now. The more things pick up, and the more interview requests, tour booking, uh, you know, you have PR managers. Does it become more difficult to focus on the art, or has it become a little bit easier now that you have this system in place? You know, with with you know more elaborate structure of you know, record labels and whatnot. Theoretically, it should be easier. 
and so far it has been. But I believe the key to keeping the band focused more on our art and our, you know, on what we're good at, I think that involves being cautious about the infrastructure that supports us and making sure that we work with people whose goal is to support our creative uh, direction. Sure. Um, so, so, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm one of those kids who grew up in punk rock, like, you know, you just, you just have to start off, like, not trusting anybody. Right. Assuming <laughs> that everybody's trying to, like, get something from you. Right. And as soon as you find the people that don't care about getting something from you, that want to come along for the ride, then you're, you know, then you're working with the right people. Right on. And do you feel you guys are, you've hit that plateau now? I where wouldn't work with somebody if I didn't feel, if I felt like they, they had some ill intent at heart. Right on. Right on. So, to kind of switch gears into a little more lighthearted stuff. So, I know you guys are big food lovers. Has there been any like uh, favorite food stops on the tour or anything that's yeah, been yeah, particularly totally, memorable? Totally, right, totally. just we had, some, we had some good food on this tour. Awesome. Uh, Nikki's Pizza in Detroit was probably one of the most outstanding meals I've had on tour ever. Awesome. And I don't, I couldn't even, I couldn't even begin any of this in Detroit. And you're going like, the hell is there to eat in Detroit? Like, <laughs> Nikki's Pizza. That Nikki's Pizza. Oh man. Right on. Uh, that was one of the most surprising things ever, yeah, so, so that's great. Uh, one of the best things about touring is that you're exposed to each city's arts and culture and part of each city, country, state, whatever. Sure. Part of the culture is the food and, you know, we're all six foot whatever, you know, virgin on 200 pounds, so there's, you know, we know how to put them back. Right on. <laughs> and, uh, we're lucky right now because we're on tour with uh, Decapitated, who's a Polish band, and they've got some super die-hard Polish fans who are bringing them home-cooked Polish food on a nightly basis, and uh, I was giving their singer a little bit of a hard time about not sharing the wealth the other day. <laughs> so we've been eating Polish sausage for a couple days, and it is something else. Right on, right on, man. Very cool. So. It seems that uh, Baroness has really hit a stride as one of the leading metal bands. Like, what, what's the next step for the band? I mean, is there a goal in sight, or are you just kind of you guys letting things unfold and seeing where it takes you? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't. No, I'm not entirely comfortable with our position as leading, as leaders of anything, because that assumes that there's somebody following. And, um, sure. You know, I think we're we've we've been propped up by the bands that have come before us. Maybe in the same way that eventually, you know, we'll help prop somebody else up. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cyclical thing. Right. You know, like there's, you go up and then you come down, then you go up and then you come down. Sure. Uh, I just try not. I mean, honestly, I just try not to think that our goal is to be at the forefront of of anything other than, you know, at the forefront of our own passion. Right on. This. You know, it's 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 a, it is a it is a it is a very passionate pursuit playing in this band. It's our you know it's our outlet. It's it's uh, you know it's our psychiatrist. It's our it's our mother sometimes. It's you know this band this band we've turned into something that elevate something to elevate us and keep us you know keep us moving forward as people. Sure. If it didn't. We would probably would stop because you know we've all seen what happens when people fall prey to the trappings of rock and roll. Them, right? Sure. Fuck that. You know that's another thing. It's like I'd like to, I'd like to present an alternate viewpoint to that decadent lifestyle. It doesn't need to be like that. You can have families. You can you know you can have jobs outside of it. You can be you can roll everything up into one ball, call it art, and roll it down the table and watch it go, and it doesn't have to. You know, it doesn't have to destroy you. Absolutely. Well said, well said. So as we uh, close out, what do you guys have in store, uh, you know, as, as we had in the latter part of 2012 into 2013? Do you guys have a tour, game plan? Tour, 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 tour. Right on. Awesome. Any new spots that you guys are going to be hitting in the coming year that uh, you haven't got a chance to hit before? I mean, you we, guys have been pretty much are, everywhere. Our plans are still kind of vague, so there's no real, you know, I can't really brag about going anywhere yet. Right on. Detroit. I went there. It was awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully we'll be coming to, back to Detroit sometime soon. Right on. 
Cool, man. Well, yeah, I really appreciate you taking a minute with Blow the Scene readers. We really appreciate your time, and we definitely look forward to keeping up with your future endeavors, man. Awesome.